Hi everyone, this is Ankita Roy. I'm a PhD student in University of North Texas and I'm back again with another fun video to meld the complex concepts of material science and solidify them into simple stories. In this video, we'll be talking about Google Maps, but for additive microstructures during solidification. So when I first started studying about solidification, there was this one complicated map that everyone revered, the GR map, also known as the columnar to equiax transition map. This map predicts what microstructure a metal will get when it solidifies. And it looks like these two at the top, which has a columnar section to the left, a transition region in the middle, and an equiax region to the right. As you can see, at the bottom, the ma map kind of predicts that during solidification, we'll get either a long, uh, narrow, elongated columnar grain, or short, blocky planar region, or pretty equiax grains. These maps change a lot with different alloys, but they are very helpful to design the mechanical properties of the alloy. So naturally, I wanted to build such a map for my own alloy to predict the microstructure for my newly designed low alloy martensitic steel that we had printed using both LPBF and LDD. For achieving this, we ran a full 3D melt pool simulation and calculated the thermal gradient and growth rate everywhere within that tiny melt pool region for both LPBF and DED. Once we had the GR values, then after a huge round of calculation, adding sugar, spice, and everything nice, we constructed this naive looking GR map based on the existing KGT framework, but tuned specifically for our alloy. And then we overlaid the GR values on top of this map, and it looks something like this. And here's where things got interesting. For the DED process, the microstructure lined up perfectly with what the map had predicted. And we were really happy to accomplish this daunting task. The map could successfully predict the planar grains at the bottom, the dendritic grains at the interior, next the transition grains, and finally the equiax grains at the very top. So far so good, right? But then came LPBF. This is where the real twist of the story begins. Our LPBF printed steel of the exact same alloy showed something entirely different. It showed pure cellular microstructure from the bottom all the way to the top and zero equiax region. And when we overlaid LPBF's G, uh, GNR values on the GR map, the map insisted this top region must become equiaxed. But the microstructure didn't care, it stayed cellular. So at this point, we knew something important was missing from the original map. To investigate, we went back to the fundamental of what actually governs solidification. We found that the total undercooling also includes thermal undercooling, which is related to the velocity of the laser, and the radial undercooling, which is related to the dendrite tip radius, in addition to compositional undercooling. In traditional solidification methods like casting, many of these contributions are almost negligible, so GR map simply ignored them. But in AM, the, the, with the extremely high cooling rate, this term suddenly become very important. So we ca carefully added them back into the map, and yes, it improved the prediction, but something still wasn't fitting. The top of the melt pool was stubbornly remained equiaxed, even though the real microstructure was cellular, which meant there was still a missing piece. This is where the story takes turn. While digging into the early papers of Kurtz and Trivedi, we stumbled upon a fascinating detail. Kurtz mentioned almost as a note that at very high growth velocities beyond the stability domain, the microstructure can revert back to columnar or cellular instead of becoming equiaxed at high velocities. But here's the catch. Traditional processes like casting never reach those high velocities. So these instability regions were never experimentally confirmed and never mapped to the GR maps. Additive manufacturing finally reaches those crazy high velocities. So we revived the forgotten idea and plugged the theory into our map and we added the high velocity instability domain that had been missing for so long. And then, once the instability domain was added, the map clicked into place. Suddenly, the entire cellular LPBF microstructure made sense. And now, at the top, instead of equi equiax, it predicted columnar or cellular that matched our observation. It turned out that the classical GR map wasn't wrong, it simply was incomplete for rapid solidification domains of additive manufacturing. And it provided this missing piece to complete the puzzle. So this discovery, in addition to improving the GR map, played a key role in me receiving the Acta Materialia Students Award. 
So if you have been wondering why your LPBF microstructures sometimes never show equiax strains, this is probably the reason. The map you're using might be missing the instability region at high growth rates and you might find some insights into the, in this paper. If you find this useful, please share it and cite it using the QR code. These missing regions can truly change how we design the AM microstructure. Thank you for listening and I'll see you soon again with more stories where molten metal meets beautiful physics.